guys and welcome to the Sunderland vs Blackpool match review. So if you follow this channel uh, quite regularly you'll know that I've taken a bit of a break from making these match reviews and previews and stuff like that for quite uh, a, couple, well, a couple of weeks now or so and that's because it's just really become quite repetitive and I'm saying the same shit over and over and over again but I feel like you have something to work with uh, off the back of today's or yesterday's game should I say with it now being Sunday. I mean, we were still shit, but we were a different kind of shit. Almost a better shit. I don't know where I'm going with this. Parkinson out. So, we get into the game, and of course, Blackpool, we're going up against them. And for me, I thought this is a definite loss. I thought there's no other way around it. We're going to lose. Blackpool are banging form right now. They were fourth at the beginning of play yesterday. And I thought the only way to go was... A loss, but we did get away with a one all draw, and there are some positives to look at, which we will look at, um, but the negatives still outweigh the positives, in my opinion. But um, we'll have a look at the formation, we'll have a look at the side, the starting 11, and we've started off with five at the back with two win backs, and immediately you think, you know, we're at home, we're playing Blackpool, which, you know, no disrespect to them, but it just shows how low the standards have got, doesn't it, really? I mean, me thinking that a good result yesterday or thinking that that was a good result just show how low the standards have got again with no disrespect to Blackpool because they're a good side but for a team that should be going for promotion or you know a club maybe not a team because I don't think our team are great but our club should be going for promotion in this league there's no doubt or, there's no doubt about it at all and for me to think that a one all draw at home against Blackpool and we've got five at the back is a good result that just shows something because with dropped off so considerably under Parkinson and I think because results have been so bad in recent weeks and last couple of months under Parkinson who I think has lost 8 of 12 or 13 games now so far which is terrible in itself but it just shows how low we've sank um, but anyway that's me going off topic a little bit but we did go with 5 at the back we had John McLaughlin in goal we had, uh, we had Flanagan we had De Bock, and we also had uh, Osterk at the back uh, we had Denver Hume on the, as the sort of left wing back um, and we had Onayan as a sort of right wing back. Now we had uh, Dobson and Power in the middle. I was very happy that Leadbitter was dropped, um, which was one mild positive, I suppose. And then as a sort of front three, we had Duncan Watmore, we had Charlie White and we had uh, Chris Maguire as well. Now the one... And it doesn't seem like much to a lot of people, but I think with all these rumours that have been going around and you know the video I made about uh, the other day about Ada McGeady and how the squad harmony seems to be very much fractured, one thing I did notice before the game was they actually had a team huddle before the game, which I haven't seen in a while, you know, where they all get together just before kick-off, before the first whistle, and, um, and they just seemed a bit more together, and I don't know whether that is something that Parkinson's maybe just said to him, right, okay, do this before the game to make it look like it's the right decision. I don't know, but I can't see that happening. So it, that was nice to see. That was a nice start, and I thought, right, okay, maybe we're really up for this here. So first couple of minutes, we got ourselves a corner or two, and I thought, okay, right, this is this is okay. But then one minute later, we concede. Three, minute, three minutes in, and we concede. And to be fair, the goal itself, the, the finish itself, was absolutely cracking. Um, but... The amount of times and the amount of chances we had to defend prior to that goal was ridiculous. And the way in which we defended every time was appalling. Absolutely appalling. There was a good two or three times the ball picked into the box. Uh, Nanjale for uh, Blackpool, he was pretty much playing head tennis with himself for a short time um, leading up to the goal. Because no one could beat him in the air for it and he was barely even freaking jumping. But he is a big lad, 6'4", I believe he is. Um but we had a good two or three chances to clear it and the third of the clearances went straight to one of their players. He took a touch and he just pinged it into the top left-hand corner, which is, you know, in terms of John McLaughlin, he couldn't have done much about it. It was an absolutely cracking finish. Um, uh, so we were goal down. And we did show character. I'll give the lads that. We did show character. But the main concern for me, again, was the creativity from the midfield because the back three... The stranger looked okay. Tom Flanagan for me, and I'll hold my hands up, you know, I, I've said many a time that I believe Tom Flanagan is probably the worst defender at the club. But I'll always give credit when it's due, and I think he played very, very well yesterday. Um, the three at the back, there was times where we were just controlling possession, but it was all at the back. It was all at the back, and 
we give it into the midfield, we give it into the likes of Dobson or Power, and when we get there, it's almost like there's a force field and a barrier that just stops them. So we've got Dobson and and Power. You know, it's all well and good that our back three are controlling it or you know keeping all the ball, but we can't score that way. We need the midfield to have a bit of creativity of themselves, and they didn't have that. As soon as they got it, like I say, it was like a force field was there, and we're just stopping them. Then they'd either sideways pass it or give it straight back to the defence, and that would leave our only attacking threat of giving it to either Denver Hume or Nain to bomb down the wings, mainly. Hume, who for me, and I did say it on social media, he looks so much better when McGeady is not on the pitch because you know communication, what have you, is massive in football. It's huge, and I think McGeady was probably just a bit of a dick with with Hume, and he kind of did what he wanted down the left hand side. He needed someone to come in for those overlapping runs, and he was getting that, and he was really getting at them. But the worrying thing is, our biggest attacking threat right now is a novice left back. That is the biggest worry. That's huge. But, you know, fair play to Denver because he's looked brilliant in recent weeks. I'm glad he's come back into the lineup because I think he was very, very good. Um, but, again, we're not creating enough because as soon as we get to the centre of midfield, we're going backwards or we have to resort to hoofing it because neither Dobson or Power seem to have the confidence to get at them and make their, uh, their midfield work. Do you know what I mean? They make it far too easy for them. All Spearing had to do yesterday was just sit back. Because Power weren't going to run at him, Dobson weren't going to run at him, and he made it an absolute piece of piss. It was a joy for him. It was easy. Spearing would have had an absolute field day yesterday, and he did. Um, but um, we did manage to get back into it. It was a corner from Maguire, whipped in, and very, very well um, played to uh, to White, to Charlie White, because he had to wrestle his way in front of his man and volley it into the uh, into the top corner. It was a great finish, and I'm really, really happy for White. I am as much as I don't think. He's the striker we need, um, and I don't massively rate him, and I've made that perfectly clear. You need to, again, credit where it's due. It was a very good finish, and it was worked very well. Um, and again, I think to sum up the game from a perspective from us, we weren't creating anywhere near enough, but at times we did look like we were in control, but we just weren't doing anything with it. It was just, a, a like I say, the back three passing it around amongst each other, and then there's nothing because that midfield, they're just so empty. There's, they're so anonymous. Dobson was poor. Power was terrible. Um, but, you know, I, I, we were probably fortunate as well because there was a chance for Blackpool where um, it fell to one of our players in the box. He's hit it with a goal gaping. And he's actually hit Nanjale on the line to keep it out. And he was in an offside position. And if, had, if it hadn't hit Nanjale, it would have gone in and it would have been 2-1. And God knows what the scoreline would have been from there. But we did hit the bar as well. Charlie Wyke, again, who I think was all right um, yesterday, so fair play to him. He got a header that hit the bar. Um, but other than that, we didn't create anything uh, at all, really. Um, and to be fair, I don't think Blackpool actually created a massive amount either, um, really. I think we had one shot on target and they had three shots on target in the end, something like that. Again, it's piss poor and it's terrible, particularly that we're playing at home. But I think on the good side, you can look at Blackpool are an informed side and we didn't just simply crumble, particularly after going a goal down. So if we are going to cling on to any form of positives, then that's that. But at the end of the day, it, it's still not good enough. It's still far from good enough. The only reason I did this review because I think there was little things to pick out and there was things to criticise. It weren't just simply, we were shit and that's the end of it. There were little things in there. As much as some people just like to say we're shit, we're shit, we're shit, which essentially we are, but sometimes especially with these videos, I have to be able to pick out little things and give criticism at the same time. So there were mild positives. We were still shit, but marginally better. That's that's how I would sum up the game. And to get a point, you know, looking back on the results we've had in recent weeks and how Blackpool have been doing, they've been fantastic and played a great brand of football under Grayson and we did limit them to an extent. So that is a positive. But it's still far from good enough and I don't want this to continue under under um, under Parkinson. And don't get me wrong, the referee was terrible. He sent off Dobson with about 15, 20 minutes left, something like that. And it for me, it was never a foul, let alone um, a sending off. To be fair, I've only seen it at one angle and my first reaction, it was kind of from the back that I saw. It looked like to me that Dobson had won the ball. He may have fallen through ever so slightly, but Nanjali went down like a sack of shit. Considering he's 6'4", 
in a big brick shit house. He was rolling around the floor like he'd had his freaking ankle broken. And it's pathetic. And a lot of the game, the referee was giving a lot to Blackpool. And, you know, I don't like to complain about the refs, but that's it. Because literally two or three minutes after that sending off, it was a second yellow for Dobson, by the way, which for me, again, it never was. Um, one of their players, I'm not, I can't remember exactly who it was, completely followed through an O'Neill. It was almost identical to the Dobson one, but worse because there was far more connection with it with O'Neill, and not even a free kick was given. You could, didn't bat an eyelid, and there was just little things like that all afternoon where you know tiny little shoves weren't were were, were, were given in their favour. Yet there was times where um, Tilt was climbing all over the back of Wyke to win headers. He was using him as a climbing frame at, at points, and it was ridiculous. And the referee still wasn't given anything. Yet if Wyke slightly backs into their defenders, Wyke's penalised. And those little things just weren't going our way. But in all, of course, it's still it's far from good enough. Um, just a frustrating day at the office. And for me, I'm still Parkinson out. Um, again, I'm just trying to pick, pick out any kind of positives. Um, and I can't really give a man of the match either because it just really, it wasn't good enough there wasn't enough to say that they didn't give enough I, I, I can't criticise them in terms of ethics I think there were effort there I just don't think there's a system that suits the players the players aren't simp simply aren't good enough I think if we got a, a big leader in the middle because we're definitely missing Alexa Catamol massively a, a, a sort of vocal big aggressive central midfielder as well as a creative one next to him I think we could be okay we have the pieces or the starting building blocks to a decent side of course we still need a, a much more quality we, we need a, a better I'd say maybe a right back maybe another centre back a couple of midfielders and a striker or a winger so that it's still good four or five plays we need desperately to even remotely mount a challenge for the top six because that's my hopes now it's literally just top six because I don't I, we're not getting in the top two and I've said that before but um, yeah, that's my sort of review of the game. So in all, to summarise, we're still shit. <laughs> we just weren't as shit, if that makes sense. <laughs> but anyway, that'll be it, guys. If you have enjoyed this review, then please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jammed.